I am by grace. Grace was, grace is, grace will forever be. Do you have any question about your identity in Christ? This is your time. Q&A, testimony sharing, exchanging ideas, business, leadership, social, mentorship, and more. It's a one-on-one -on -one with Brother James. Greetings, beloved. Grace and peace to you. Welcome to One on One with Brother James. Yes, my son, how are you? Good. You're good? Yeah. You're feeling good? Yeah, I'm feeling good. The presence of God is heavy. Amen. Amen. Yes, so I want to talk to you about uh, a couple of things that we've been sharing and uh, we've been studying the word and uh, the Lord has been so gracious to us and he's been, you know, moving right and left. And um, Derek, yes. are you a sinner? No, I'm not. You're not a sinner? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Why are you not a sinner? Can you go in public and say you're a sinner? And Amen. If anyone comes and says, you, because maybe you sinned, then you're a sinner. Not even I can't, but I can't think about it. You can't even think about it? No. Praise Jesus. No. Hallelujah. And so, as you cannot say that you're a sinner, no. I want to give you a little uh, more yeah. boldness and confidence that no one should ever tell you or condemn you or judge you, or look you down. Amen. And it's not only you, mm -hmm. it's to anyone who believed, who received Jesus Christ as his Lord, as our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. If you have received the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, yeah. I want to tell you, sin is an X factor. Sin is an X topic. Mm -hmm. Sin is an X substance in your life. Sin does not exist. In the life of believers. My son, let me ask you. After you believed and received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yes. What did you receive? Did you stay neutral? Did you stay human? No. No, you didn't. No. You became what? I became a new creation. You became a new creation. Mm -hmm. A believer. A believer. Mm -hmm. Who believed and received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. He did not stay neutral. He did not stay, you know, there as, you know, uh, in between, not a sinner and not, you know, a new creation. What is that new creation? What is, could you give me a description, something in that new creation? Yeah. What is it? So the new creation, mm. it is the living of God in you. Is the life of yeah. God in life. you. Yeah, it is the life. Yeah, because you received the son of God. In yes, you. yes. The one you believe. Yes. So, as a matter of fact, yeah, it is not you who is walking now. Uh -huh. It is the life of Christ in you which oh, is walking. Oh my God. Oh my God, my son. Thank you so much. And so, dear beloved, I want to tell you about the life of a believer. So today, let's start about a little something that we said. That we are not sinners. We are righteous people. That is the life of a believer. A believer is righteous. A believer is holy. A believer is blameless. A believer is pure and perfect and innocent of sin. There is no sin in the life of a believer. There's not even sin conscious. There's not even sin, you know, anywhere in his setting, in, in her setting. In your setting, there's nothing like sin in your world, in the world of believers. Jesus Christ offered us, gave us a world of our own. We are in the world, but not of the world at all. Praise Jesus, beloved. And so, dear beloved, I want to give you a little scripture that says, and go to Matthew chapter 1, verse, uh, uh, verse 21. The Bible says, that was the revelation of Christ. This is a time that the, the, the Lord God 
was revealing the Messiah, was revealing the Christ to the world, was revealing the Savior to the world. And listen to this. That's why from today you will never and never call yourself a sinner. Not even anyone has a right, not even one person, not a preacher, because God himself who gave himself up for you, he cannot call you a sinner anymore. He cannot call you a rebel anymore. He cannot call you disobedient anymore. He cannot call you weak anymore. He cannot condemn you. He cannot judge you. When he looks at you, he looks at his son, Jesus Christ. He does not look at us in the lenses of our past. He looks at us in the lenses of faith and faith is now. He looks at us in the image of his son, Jesus Christ. And look at this, what he did, dear beloved. When the revelation of the Messiah was given, listen to the Bible. In Matthew chapter 1 verse 21, the Bible says, She will give birth to a son, that is Mary. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. You are to give him the name Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, my beloved. Jesus. Jesus. Not Derek. No. Not James. Mm -hmm. Not Prophet Isaiah. Not Moses. But Jesus. But Jesus. Mm -hmm. Hey. Ay, 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 ay. And when you receive him, you receive his life. Yes. Praise Jesus. Now, look at this. And you are to give him the name Jesus. Pause. Coma. Uh-uh. <laughs> Let's go to the meaning of Jesus. The Bible says next, because, in the same verse, he says, because he will save his people from their sins. Actually, I love how the Bible says his people. His people. Those he knew, he also called. Those he called, oh my God. Those he knew, those he predestined. He also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also sanctified. And those he sanctified, he also glorified. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. You're glorified. Mm -hmm. And then you have the very being of Christ in you. Yes. The glorious being. The beautiful being. The awesome being of Christ, my son. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. And now you're proud to be called a believer. You're proud to be called a grace believer. Amen. Not just a believer. Yes. Ah, because you can believe and believe in Buddha. In Buddha. You can be a Buddhist. You can be whatever. I don't want to mention every kind of denomination and belief and whatever. Yeah. You can be a believer of yourself. Mm -hmm. Self-belief. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. But that's not me. And that's not Derek. Mm -hmm. ah, and that's not you, beloved. That's not you. That's not you. As Derek says, boldly and confidently, as he says, and that's not me, surely that's not you. You should not believe in anything else, not even in yourself. Self is destruction. Self is evil. Self is an ignorant wall that limits you to see Christ in you. It's not you, but Christ. Believe in Christ. It's not self-belief. It is Christ in you, beloved. Praise Jesus. Because he will save his people from their sins. Mm? My sin, your sin, someone's sin. Jesus Christ takes away the sin of the world. As John 1 says, John 1 29, the Bible says, the next day, John the Baptist saw Jesus coming and he said, Behold, believe, the Son of God, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And now here, Jesus Christ took away your sin. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, Jesus, God made him, God made Jesus, this man, Savior. Savior, Savior, Savior Jesus, Savior. Why is he called Savior? Why is he called Savior? Save me from what? Save you from what? Praise Jesus. It's not about saving you from poverty. 
saving you from, you know, anger, saving you from wax of the flesh. No, flesh itself, sin itself. Praise the Lord. Not saving you from fear. No, the issue, something that brings fear. The source. He dealt with the source. He dealt with the root. Mm. And he set us free from the root. Praise Jesus. He set us free from the nature. Hallelujah. He became sin. God made him who had no sin to become sin for us so that in him we may become the righteousness of God. And then you became righteous. Not of your works. Not by doing anything so that you may become, but by believing that you become. Praise Jesus. As John the Baptist testified and he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John chapter 1 verse 29. Behold, the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him. The man who was to prepare the way. John the Baptist said he testified boldly and confidently. Without fear in him. He said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Beloved, you were the one in the world. But as the people of this world, we were first the people of this world, and later on Jesus Christ, when he appears to us, we were all dead in our transgressions, dead in our sin, dead in deeds of darkness, dead in brightness, dead in all sorts of evil. But Christ Jesus took you out. Christ Jesus took me out. Christ Jesus took us out of bondage, out of darkness, out of Egypt. And now the next journey was transformation. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Dear beloved, there is no transformation without change. A lot of people today, they are struggling with, with you know, uh, believing, believing that they are righteous, not because they are right, they are not righteous, but because the world is constantly and religion is constantly preaching to them, telling them they are sinners. You are not a sinner. When you say you are a sinner, you are literally saying Jesus Christ did not die on the cross, and if he died on the cross, he did not rise again, and if he rose again. Then I have nothing to do with him. Yeah. Are you seeing that son? Yes. Praise Jesus. Amen. So dear beloved. I want to tell you today. That after you believe. When you believe. You receive. When you believe. Some people quote 1 John. Chapter, chapter 1 verse, verse 8, 9, 10. So, uh, quoting, misinterpreting the scripture. Saying that if, if we call ourselves, if we say to ourselves that we do not have sin and we have not sinned, we make God out to be a liar. You know why he was saying? If we say, let's say, he was addressing the people called Gnostics. Yes. And those people were saying, Christ Jesus did not come in the flesh. Mm -hmm. he, didn't, he didn't appear as a human. And here in Matthew 1.21, mm -hmm. we see Jesus. Yeah. He was given... He, after he's born, he shall be given a name, Savior, Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sin. John 1, chapter, John 1, chapter 14, the Bible says, The word, the word, the word, see, the words from the beginning. The word became flesh. Praise Jesus. The word became flesh. He, was, he became physical. He became a man like you. Two eyes like you. Two ears like you. One mouth, one nose, legs, everything. He was completely human like you. But in him was no sin. And that's why he came to give you that body, to give you that mind, to give you that life, to give you that soul that has no sin in it. Praise the Lord. That has no darkness in it. And then he was crucified on the cross that you, that you may become like him. As a matter of fact, at the cross, before he's crucified, Pilate said, who do you want me to give you? Barabbas or Jesus? This man, Barabbas, represented everybody in the world. Amen. Everyone mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. He was the sinner representing every sinner. As a matter of fact, he was a notorious sinner. <laughs> Notorious killer, man of darkness, 
That was you, that was me, son. That was every one of us. But when he was crucified, the devil thought he was crucifying Jesus. The devil did know that he's crucifying himself. (laughs) Praise Jesus. He never knew that he's crucifying himself. Remember when Jesus is crucified, it is seen that he's crucified. It is seen that he's judged. Praise the Lord. Because when he dies, we die. Yeah. We were dying to sin. And when he rose again, we resurrected into justification, yeah. into purity, into yeah. glory. Praise the Lord. And that's who you were, son. Mm. Hallelujah. And so, when Brother John was addressing these people, Gnostics, he was literally saying, if Jesus, if we say we're without sin, if we say we're, if, uh, if, if uh, uh, Barabbas, if Barabbas could say he didn't have sin, then he say God is a liar. Mm-hmm. Why didn't you come? Why did Jesus come? Are you seeing this? Yes. Why did Jesus come? Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Why did Jesus come if we didn't have sin? That's what he was trying to address. So when brothers, mm-hmm. when we say, when we say that, when we say that we are righteous, that's we are literally declaring the finished work of Christ Jesus. We are declaring the glory of Christ Jesus. We are worshiping God in truth and in spirit. In truth is, the truth is, we were sinners and we received the grace to be righteous without our effort. Christ Jesus came full of grace and truth. The grace was the power of God to save us. Are you seeing this? I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Romans 1.16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, brother. For it is the power. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God for the salvation of those who believe. Not those who work, bro. Not those who perform, bro. Not those who cover themselves, bro. But those who believe. And you believed, my son. Yes. You believed. believed. And you became. And I became. Hallelujah. Amen. You're not calling yourself righteous. He called you righteous. You're not making yourself righteous. He made you righteous. Mm. And it is all in the cross. Amen. It is all in the cross mm-hmm. and the resurrection. Praise Jesus. Amen. So, dear beloved, when people don't, you know, Testify boldly and confidently the cross of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus. It means they are actually saying he didn't come. If he came, he didn't die. If he died, I have nothing to do with him. And so we must learn. We must wake up to testify the grace. Dear beloved, wake up. Wake up. Wake up, oh you sleeper, for the light of the Lord is shining on you. What is that light? That light is the righteousness of God that you have in you. The light is the glory of God that is on you. The love of God that is on you. The peace of God that is in you. Every single virtue of God, the wisdom of God, the power of God that resides deep down in you. Dear beloved, it is a high time that we must understand that Jesus Christ is Coming into the flesh, coming into this world, he was to do what we couldn't do for ourselves. He was to do what the blood of bulls and goats and all the sacrifices the people of the Old Testament brought. They were all pointing to Christ, the one and only sacrifice that was to take away our sin and our transgressions and break all the curses that were holding us in darkness. And here we are, boldly. Confidently testifying the grace of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. And it's a high time that you break out in freedom and in joy. And because when you can't perceive it, you can't live it. Mm. When you don't believe it, you cannot live it. Amen. You cannot live a blameless, a pure, a glorified life. When you don't believe that you are already, you know, you know, pure, you know, perfect, blameless, and without any blemish and any stain. 
When we boldly always speak about this, this is not just mere words. This is not just mere confessions. Faith is that state, is that position where, where belief precedes confession and you become what you believe. Praise Jesus. Amen. Amen. And every day of your life, the more you hold on, the more you speak this, the more you testify this, in public and in private, the more you speak this, you begin to reflect this. Because the world is wicked. The world will never change. But we have changed. People are busy looking for a better place. People are busy looking for blessings. People are busy holding on to promises. People are busy holding on to Goshen. People are busy holding on to Bethel. People are busy holding on to a certain blessing. Canaan, my Canaan. No, Canaan means Jesus. He was the promise. He is all that you need. You need the Savior. And the Savior does not come to give you this world. The world you have it before he came. You had the blessings, brother. So what you need to pursue is transformation. For change you have received. So today what you need, you know what you need today? Today what you need is to keep pursuing and professing the faith. And how do you profess the faith? The perspective has to first change. What is that perspective? I am a sinner. No, never say that. I am weak. No, never say that. I am confused. No, never say that. I am poor. No, never say that. No, you don't say I am that. Mm -mm. No, nothing like, nothing, anything of darkness. You don't speak all corrupt system. You don't speak corrupt system. Yes. You say what God made you. You say what God made you. Mm -hmm. You say I am blessed. Mm -hmm. You say I am righteous. You say I am holy. You say I am pure. You say I am rich. You say every good vacuum. Even when you see you're sick, like literally your body is, you know, facing illness. You say, I am healed in the name of Jesus. I am pure and perfect and healthy. I shall not face any sickness in my body. He was broken and bruised so that, that I can be healed. And the more you speak it, the more it comes alive. The tongue carries the power of life and death. And those who love it, they eat its fruit, brother. Amen. Praise Jesus. Those who love the tongue. And so what are you confessing daily? You will confess nonsense. You confess nonsense, you live by nonsense. As a man thinks, so he is. So if someone thinks he's righteous, then he will live righteous. Yes. The greatest enemy of knowledge is not ignorance. Mm. It is illusion of knowledge, mixture. Imagine God made you righteous and you're literally saying, I'm a sinner. Ha! No more, brother. No more calling yourself what you are not. Call yourself what the Bible calls you and the Bible is God himself. That word you're reading daily, it is God breathed and when you read it and you feel condemned and you feel judged change perspective change perspective change the lenses through which you're looking at the word of god and the more you see the word of god loving kind patient tolerant man you begin to reflect the word you begin to live the word my son and I believe you have begun to live the word. Keep testifying. No matter what the world says. No matter what the reality screams. When it screams nonsense, scream life. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. When it says you're wrong, you say I'm right devil. You're under my feet. I know you always convinced me yesterday. I'm not a person of yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yesterday you had a chance to convince me. But today you can't convince me. Okay. Hallelujah. Today he can't convince you. No. Today he can't tell you nonsense. Whenever he screams, tell him. You are under my feet. my feet. It's too late. It's too late. <laughs> Praise Jesus. It's too late for him to judge you. It's too late for him to condemn you. It's too late for him to, you know, uh, you know stay on you. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Dear beloved, thank you so much for uh, uh, listening to this teaching. And I want to encourage you. I want to remind you that who you are in Christ Jesus is the foundation of your life. And that is righteousness. That is you are righteous. That is you are holy. That is you are pure. That is you are perfect. That is you are loved. That is you are blessed beyond numbers, beyond measure. And the more you confess that, the more you confess that, the more it becomes. The more it is reaffirmed. 
the more it is, you know, you know, steady fast in your mind. Because when you don't perceive it in your mind, when you don't believe, it's, it's belief. A, a man is as good as his belief system. A man is as strong as his belief system. A man is as powerful as his belief system. So it's not what you do, it's who you believe. It's what you believe. It's not about what you have. It's what you believe in. So what do you believe in, beloved? You is watching. What do you believe in? Do you believe in grace or you believe in yourself or in the laws? In doing and in, do, in do's and don'ts, in, in principles, in regulations. Principles and regulations and rules, they will break you down. And they will always point you to your weaknesses. They will always point you to your lack. They will always point you to your weaknesses until you realize that grace is to the humble. Until you realize, you know what? I cannot make myself righteous. I cannot make myself rich. I cannot, I cannot bless myself. It is the Lord God who blesses my soul. And the number one way he blesses your soul is to know that you're righteous, bro. The joy of salvation is in knowing that you're righteous. People don't know that. Yeah. The gift that you have in you. The gift that you have in you, brother. And that gift, mm. it is God who gives us. It is God who gives it to us. Mm -hmm. We don't work for it. No, we, don't. we don't pursue it. That's why it is a gift. It is a gift. Yeah, you, don't work for it. you don't work for it. You don't earn it. You receive it. You receive it. Oh, bro. He that oh, Santa dear. You receive it. Brother Derek says, you receive it. And surely, the Bible says in John 1, 12, And to those who believed in him, to those who accepted his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. He gave them. Mm -hmm. Dear beloved, he gave you. You don't work for it. The Lord loves you. Graciously loves you. Lovingly loves you. You know, he loves you beyond self. He left his throne all for you. Beloved, wake up, arise and shine. For the Lord is your banner, is your glory, is the lifter of your hand, is your comforter, your protector, and your present, your ever present help. He's always there to defend you. He's always there to uplift you. He's not judging. He's not condemning. He is loving. And in the name of Jesus, rise up and shine. Amen. And so, beloved, I want you to keep up, keep up with our programs. I'm Brother James, and this is my son, Derek. Yes. And we've been having a good, great time. And uh, what would you tell the people? Could you give a little message to the people? Mm. Just, just one word. One word. Mm. It is believing that you are righteous. And... Uh, you are not righteous by your efforts. Yes. You are righteous by the grace of God. Yes. It is the gift mm. that God gave you. It is you a gift. Work for it. You didn't work for it. It is the grace of God mm. in you. So keep holding on. Yes. And by, re by believing mm -hmm. that you are righteous, mm. it is you are receiving mm. the life of Christ in you. It is not you who is working. Mm -hmm. It is Christ in you. Who is so, working. Yeah, who is working. Praise the Lord. Thank you, dear beloved. Uh, I'm encouraging you to keep up with our programs. You can subscribe on our YouTube channel so that you may not miss every teaching that we're releasing. One, you'll be supporting us as, as you know how these internet things work because, uh, uh, you know, I don't know how they, you know, they do it, but uh, 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 you subscribe, then you're supporting us. And then there's also our, uh, uh, the notification button so that you can always you know be updated my focus is not just to give you content my focus is to see that your life changes praise the lord let your life change by only listening and believing and then when you listen and believe it shall never be taken away from you businesses can be taken away fields can be taken away mansions can be taken away you know, power, natural power, all that will vanish. But faith can never be taken away from you. That is Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus. And the Lord declared in, in, in Luke, Luke 10, verse 30, verse uh, from the 38 down to 41, just declared, Mary has chosen that 
which will never be taken away from her and that is faith once the perception that your righteous comes you can never you can never be condemned no one can judge you no one can look you down no one can condemn you no one can judge you as a matter of fact you are, the Holy Spirit seals every virtue of God in you that's why it can never be taken away from you and that's why you saw me when we just began the conversation I asked him are you a sinner he boldly said no I am not why faith is a guarantee and a fact You're loved, you're protected. Blessed you are. I'm Brother James.